Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Synchrobal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video I introduced my American version of the UR-700A. The UR-700A was the nuclear version of the alternative moon rocket from the Soviet Union. So there was the actual moon rocket from the Soviet Union, the N1. That was chosen and that didn't work out. It exploded a lot of times. Uh, but they were picking from the N1 and the UR-700. And the UR-700 had hypergolic cores, the UDM Asian NTO, and was designed by Vladimir Chelomey. And there was a nuclear version, a secret nuclear version of that, that Vladimir Chelomey had also proposed. But that didn't actually get revealed until like the 100th anniversary of his, de of his birth, actually, uh, in 2014. So it's like, well, that's a long time to keep a secret. But... Uh, yeah, so the UR-700A was a thing. I didn't think it was a particularly good thing because it has two separate nuclear stages, but I decided to run with it and see what would happen if you put the American 1960s nuclear engine, which was the Nerva, and the American 1960s heavy lift engine, which was the F-1, and in that case I used the F-1A, and see what would happen if you do that. The Soviet version got 105 tons to 115 tons to the moon, not to orbit, that's to the moon. Uh, these are nuclear stages, they're really meant for the moon. If you have two nuclear stages, you really don't want it ending up in lower orbit because that effectively means that you have dumped this nuclear stage into the ocean while it's still hot, like it was just running. And it takes like a month to cool these things down. So it was still running, it was still very nuclear-ish, uh, very active, and you just dunked it into the ocean. So we're not talking about the low Earth orbit capacity of this kind of rocket. It's only for going further out. Uh, then this stage gets stuck in orbit and then they have to do something with it. Uh, but in the previous video I got 92 tons to the moon uh, with the American version, but that was the 1960s version. I wanted to see what would happen if we use like the latest technology and so what we have now are the Timberwind engines which were designed in the 1990s and the designer swears that they can do it. They're pebble bed nuclear reactor engines. They're much lighter than the Nervas and so that's their main benefit but they also get better ISP by a little bit. They get 980 according to everything from the design stuff. So 441 kilonewtons, so 45 tons of thrust compared to 40 tons of thrust for the Soviet one and a little bit less than that for the Nervas and 980 seconds of ISP. So that's what we're working with and this stage is currently locked and that is because uh, otherwise we have a weird cross-feeding problem because this is also a hydrogen tank that feeds in. Basically they were using hydrogen here to sort of shield from these nuclear engines. And technically down below, where's the note on this? Oh, I better just undo. Uh, that makes me worried. I hope it'll be all right. Does it remember how this is supposed to go? Okay, well, hopefully those fairings work. All right. Um, uh, down here, they actually shielded the nuclear engines by these tanks is what was supposed to happen. It's not quite happening here. Uh, but we've got three of those timber winds on the upper stage, seven on this stage. I'm keeping the same configuration. There was some lack of clarity here. I don't consider this a good idea. Uh, I don't want to make a better ID. I'm just seeing what the equivalent would be. So somebody suggested J2 engines. That's a totally different thing. Uh, we're not trying to create Nova here, which is what you will end up doing. You're going to end up having a Nerva stage, J2s, F1s. You've got Nova. That's a t totally different rocket. <laughs> so uh, that, that's, that's, an, that's a, an American rocket. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're, we're not doing that right now. So... What I've got down below after the two nuclear stages with 3 and 7 uh, uh, is a bunch of BE-4s. I decided not to use Raptors and that's because I'm going to have a bad idea involving Starship coming up next. So I want to be an equal opportunity offender. So uh, we're using BE-4s this time. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, they've got lots of thrust. You can see the thrust weight ratio at liftoff is pretty hefty. 
and that means that these are methane oxygen cores. I'm keeping them to the same diameter because remember the logic of the diameter had been that these this was the largest diameter that you could carry through the real system of the Soviet Union. Not our real system in the United States, unfortunately. They would have to be thinner. It's actually 3.7 meters, but let's ignore that. But that's that's why they're the same diameter as the proton rocket. So yeah, we'll we'll keep it the same diameter and we are keeping them aluminum grid tanks and everything and so we've got four BE4s on each of these cores including the ones in the center uh, making for a total of 36 BE4s from Blue Origin and they burn methane and oxygen and these have to be lengthened because methane is not as dense as kerosene uh, so to get about the same mass as the rocket we had before we're, we have extra long tanks now uh, and that allowed for a greater payload. Now, guess what the payload is? So, we've got 92 tons to the moon with the F1 Nerva deal. We've got 105 to 115 tons with the RD-270 RO-31. That's the nuclear engine from the Soviet Union deal. Uh, they didn't actually make the RO-31. They had a previous version of that uh, a smaller version, test version, that you might have previously seen in my pair, on my pair. Uh, that one used the smaller version. That was the test version. I don't think I have my pair in here right now. But, yeah, guess how much payload this takes to the moon. If you said 200 tons, that's what we're looking for right now. I have not launched it yet, but I'm thinking it can carry 200 tons to the moon. Uh, thanks to the somewhat more efficient nuclear engines, but somewhat more efficient lower stage as well, and more powerful lower stage as well. But the launch mass is still about the same, and still on the same order as Super Heavy with Starship, right? So 5,000 tons with a little bit. And in fact, with the heavier Starship, it's probably going to be about the same. So that's what we're looking at here. Uh, these are the stats for the BE-4 that I have, just for reference. So 305 sea level, 341 vacuum, uh, call it 270 tons of thrust. Okay, so let's take it outside and see what happens. It'll probably explode right away. Uh, okay, well... So we might have a few problems here. Uh, it's better, it, see, with, with even Soviet-derived rockets, it might be better not to have fairings. We need hot stage rings. That's, this is why the Soviets used hot stage rings and hot staging, because they had problems with the fairings, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Okay, well, adding struts seems to have worked. Seems to have worked. We'll see in flight. Uh, while it's bouncing up and down, we're close enough. Let's just engage autopilot. Okay. Ignition. And off it goes. Now it says target is unreachable there, maybe. But right now, the Delta V is within the limit of the 7 Timberwind stage, 3000. So we'll see. It's reading less Delta V than I thought I had there. I'll have to jump, double check some things. Well, there it goes. Now past the speed of sound. Oh, we got some shaky. Something happened right there. Uh, F3. Again, some linkage between adapters and such. So right now it says we're not going to make it. It's short by 24, 25-ish. Okay, booster set. Now eight. Well, I wanted it tight. 
Okay, staging. Oh, that fairing is the one that's busted. Great. I'm sure that totally won't come back to hit us. Currently reading a little bit short here. Though it's sort of indecisive about that. Pretty sure it means this minus 41.5. I mean, maybe if only we weren't pushing that extra fairing along, I don't know if that has any effect. But yeah, it looks like we're falling short here. Not by much, though. I mean, it's a positive periapsis, just not quite enough, just not quite enough. So it was decently tight there. I think we can just pump a little bit more into the nuclear stage. Let's see. We do have quite a high thrust weight ratio at the bottom. I don't want to make those tanks any larger. If it was just a, one big nice tank for the core and the boosters, that'd be great. But of course, we're copying the UR700A. So we have this cluster going for us. Um, yeah. But it would certainly be more efficient if we didn't have it all like that. But I think it wanted 50 more. Fine. Let's try and milk more out of this one. Thrust weight ratio is pretty low. But, you know, just extending, extending it by one meter seems to do the trick. It didn't really change the thrust weight ratio that much. We might be able to toss a little bit. Okay, not that much. I'll take a 10 minute stage there. I'm not going to line up with the moon this time. Let's just go and I'll do an off-plane transfer or just demonstrate that I can do the transfer once we get to that part. Still says unreachable. Right past the speed of sound. Now eventually it makes a sort of jerk that breaks the fairings or whatever. We'll see if it does that again. Or the fairings break and then that causes the jerk. I can't tell the cause and effect on that. There... well it didn't turn as abruptly this time. And this time, nothing broke, it looks like. Okay, off go the boosters. Right now, it's saying positive. We don't have much atmosphere left to go. Okay, and staging. Now all the fairings went off properly. It's still reading a positive leftover amount for the stage. Of course, the time it takes for the stage to spool up throws that off. We are decently tight right now. We'll see. Alright, we're close to orbit and it looks like it says we'll have 26 left. Alright, we have 27 it says down there. We are in orbit. So 260 by 230. We'll leave that stage for whatever they would do with such a thing. Personally, I'd like the nuclear stages to go as far away as possible, or be otherwise controlled in some way, but there we are. We have 3,170 meters per second to push this 200 ton load over to the moon. Now we know it might not quite finish it because of the duration of the burn. 11 minutes and 55 seconds is a long time. 
Uh, so even if I plot this, it might need a little bit extra. NASA would be able to do it in time, though. On Delta V budget, not on other budgets. Okay. So there we have a periapsis within the 3170. Might have to shade it a little bit lower than the 200 tons that we've got. Or I could extend the lower stages a little bit more. But the point is that we technically have enough Delta V. I'm not going to do the burden right now. There it is, 200 tons. So, yeah. That's an impressive load to be able to fling to the moon, but there's a heck of a way to do it. Let's face it. So, with that, the AR700N, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.